Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and today I am here to show you how to make this ultimate commuter tote. This bag is an absolute blast. You have three pockets on the outside, on the front, and three pockets on the outside in the back. These are really deep, spacious pockets. The total depth on this is about nine inches there. Inside you have a center zipper compartment to keep your valuables secure. And then on either side of that is another compartment that you can customize with pockets if you like, or you can just leave open there and then store smaller bags and contents inside of there. There's plenty of room in here for files, a laptop. You could easily pack for a weekend in this bag. And like I said, it is so much fun to sew. I've got the short handles here for in case you're carrying the heavy loads. And then the shoulder strap, which you can make longer if you like, but this particular strap did fit me well to wear crossbody. And I don't like my bag to hang too low, so this is perfect for me if I were traveling. But again, feel free to make this a longer strap. You may even have the skills to turn this into an adjustable strap. For this particular project, you're going to need three yards of fabric. That's going to be one yard of 54-inch twill for the exterior, and then one yard each of two coordinating quilt weight cotton prints. All of the measurements for the pattern pieces are down in the show notes, so just scroll down or head on over to sewspire.com and you can see all of those details for this project in one spot. So shall we get started? Okay, so we're going to begin by crafting that center zipper compartment. And so for this portion of the project, you're going to need one piece of cotton fabric that measures 30 inches long by 18 inches wide. And you're going to fold that in half and just stitch those 15 inch sides and leave that top open. And for this, I am using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I've stitched both of those sides and now I'm going to create a three inch fat corner and you do that by reaching inside and aligning that center side seam with the center of the base there and then measure across three inches and I usually fold that corner and then just press it with my finger so I can see a little stitch line there. And you repeat that process on the other side to give this center compartment its depth. Okay, and then take that top edge and fold that over an inch and press that flat at the iron so that edge lays nice for you. You are going to repeat that exact same process two more times. Only the center panel has the zipper, so we're going to go ahead and create the zipper gusset for the center panel, and then you'll have two more identical panels with the side stitched and the top edges folded over. So for the zipper portion of this, you're going to need two pieces of fabric that measure 6 by 16 inches wide, and you're going to fold that in half long ways and then stitch those sides closed. And you repeat that process for the second gusset, which I have pre-crafted here. To finish this off, you want to turn it right side out and then press that top raw edge inward a half an inch. You have two zipper gussets, so you're going to take your 14 inch zipper, 
and position that with a zipper pull up and then align those folded edges atop of that zipper. Go ahead and pin that in place and then stitch down either side to secure that material to the zipper. I have attached the material to the zipper. I just want to test the zipper and make sure it functions well. And it does. Now I'm going to take those open edges and align them on the interior of this panel and I'm just going to work one at a time and I'm centering that. There's not much room on either side so you should have less than an inch on either side of that so you just want to fit that in on one side approximately down one inch so it's going to be just below that bolded edge make sure it sits nice and straight and you can put a pin in either edge to hold that and i'm just going to stitch across that top edge of that zipper gusset to secure that to one side of the interior of that panel the other side is still open and i'm going to attach that next but we can only work one side at a time Okay, I have attached that zipper to one side and that's what it looks like from the underside. Now I want to bring the opposite end over to the opposite side and position that approximately one inch from the top. And if it makes it easier for you when you're putting this on the machine deck, you can push that zipper inward like that so it's a recessed zipper and it sits down in there then you're sure to not capture any of the opposite side in your stitch line. My zipper gusset is securely attached. It's a recessed zipper, sits down about an inch and when you unzip that you can see that lays nice and flat in there. So you can leave it zipped or unzipped. It doesn't matter at this point. You want to fetch the two remaining interior compartments, which you crafted in the exact same way, less the zipper. And since mine are in um, accent fabrics, I'm going to put one on either side. And I'm just going to line that one on one side and one on the other side. And it's perfectly aligned and I just put a pin on either side and then turn that over so the zipper compartment is in the center and sandwiched between those two layers. Okay, so I have pinned those interior edges and you can see how it's now like an accordion with the zipper pocket in the center and the two open compartments on either side. I want to work with the center compartment here, these interior panels, and I want to measure in from the outer seam two inches on either side and mark that with a pin. And then I'm going to stitch from that one two inch marker to the opposite two inch marker. Make sure you back stitch with that and then you'll be leaving those outer edges unstitched and you're going to do the same thing with the opposite side. Bring over your panel and mark two inches in from either side and then you're just going to stitch pin to pin across there. And for your reference, that is 12 inches across, okay, at center. So I'll be sewing both of those exterior panels to that interior zipper panel. Okay, 
I have secured that and now you can see the interior is really taking shape there. I have those two stitch lines there to secure that interior zipper compartment. And now what I want to do is install a snap on either of the exterior compartments and I'm just going to put that snap through that layer and then reach down and lift up that zipper and install the snap below the zipper. So you want to make sure you know where below the zipper is before you start installing the snap. And you will want that at center on this. Okay, I've installed my snaps on either side of those exterior compartments. And to be clear, you'll work with that zipper, center zipper compartment up, and the snaps will go on either side of those exterior compartments. And I did use the Pellon to reinforce that with the cotton fabric, that's very important. Okay, so now I have a center zip compartment with the zipper attached and two side compartments with the snaps attached. I want to set this interior aside and we're going to begin crafting the exterior. For the exterior, you're going to need one large piece of twill fabric that measures 24 inches wide by 36 inches long. And what I have done is at the center, right in the center from the center of each 24 inch edge and from the center long ways, I have stitched down a piece of heavy weight pellon that measures nine inches across by 14 inches wide. That is going to allow the base of your bag to sit nice and flat and offer you a lot of stability. So go ahead and stitch that in place and then take a like size piece of quilt batting and position that behind the twill so that the twill is facing right sides up. Okay, so I have my twill, the pellon base, and then my quilt batting. So we're going to now attach the exterior pockets. I have finished one and it looks like this. And I'm going to show you how to make that and you will craft two. So for the exterior pockets, you're going to need one piece of cotton fabric that's 24 inches wide by 10 inches tall. Go ahead and press a half inch seam or hem in that on the bottom and the top. And you're going to do the same for a like size piece of twill. You're going to press those top and bottom edges over and then layer that twill on top of that cotton so you have about a quarter inch peeping up across the top there as an accent and go ahead and stitch all the way down that to secure and then come back in with a second row of stitching to add the accent like I have done here. Okay, now I have two pocket panels with the top stitching on those and they are fully aligned and I want to take that large body panel and position those pockets four and a half inches from the top on that body panel and I have divided those pockets in thirds with a press line you can use pins to mark where a third is if you like, or you can use the iron. And I'm going to pin that pocket in place there. And then I'm going to turn this big panel around and position the second pocket with its top edge or that little accent lip there 
four and a half inches from the top of that panel on the opposite side. And this pocket is also pressed in thirds so that I can see where to stitch to divide this pocket. Okay, I have both pockets pinned in place and I want to show you how this panel looks. So the two pockets are on either end and I'm going to stitch across the bottom of both pockets first and then I'm going to stitch the pockets in thirds to divide them. Okay, I've divided those pockets, so now I have a large panel with three pockets on either end. I want to take this and fold it in half and align those top edges and the sides. And then I'm going to stitch down these sides here using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and I'm going to leave the top open. I've stitched down both of the sides. I want to check all the layers and make sure I captured those pocket panels in there. And if you find you've missed anything, go ahead and go back and fix that now. So if you're happy with those side seams, go ahead and trim off about two and a half, three inches from that top portion and this is just to minimize that bulk at the seam. You're going to trim that about a quarter inch from that seam and then we're going to fashion a nine inch fat corner. So this is the same way we made the corners on the interior. You're going to align that side seam with the center of that base panel measure over nine inches and then stitch across there to give the bag its depth. You're going to repeat the same process on the other side. I created those corners on both sides and I want to trim off that excess to the right of the stitch line about the five eighths of an inch and you could just throw out those little corners. Now you should be able to really feel the benefits of that pellon that we stitched in between. Go ahead and turn your exterior right sides out, poke out those corners, and fold that top edge inward approximately an inch. And you may need to pin that to keep that in place. Just work your way all the way around until you have that top edge folded over and secure. Okay, I have my top edge folded inward and you can see I have three pockets on the front, three pockets on the back. Now I wanna fit that interior on the inside of this and it's gonna be the same thing, just work slowly and begin at the sides there. And the trick here is take the center seam of your center panel and align that with the center seam of the exterior. So get those side seams aligned first. And then you can begin moving around this. I like to try and identify center on the front and the back first. You may still have to adjust that in the end, but that will help you if you get kind of a ballpark there. And just work all the way around this until you have that interior pinned in place. You're gonna pull the sides open as needed to get that to fit nice. Have that interior fit in there nice. And you can see I have the three compartments. And now what I wanna do is craft the straps. Okay, this particular bag is gonna have a shoulder strap that measures six by 32. 
and two handle straps that measure six by 18. All three straps are crafted in the same sew spire way. You take that piece of fabric, you fold it in half long ways, press that, open that up, bring those edges in to meet on that center press line. And then I use a three inch wide strip of batting and put that in the center channel and then fold that strap over one more time to fashion the handle. You're gonna stitch down the open edge first, then the opposite edge, and then I added a third row of stitching to finish those. So go ahead and craft all three straps. So I've crafted the handles, and those are positioned. The shoulder strap goes at the side seam in between the interior and the exterior layers. Tuck that down about an inch, an inch and a half. And then the handle straps go between that interior outer compartment and the exterior and the same thing you just tuck those down inside of there about an inch inch and a half and that's on either side and you just make sure that they're comfortable for you and aligned how you would like and then you're going to unsnap both compartments and you're going to work from that center seam there or as close as you can get probably it's right on the opposite end of the handle and you're going to stitch in a u around to this side back stitch and stop then come over to this compartment here and stitch from the handle around to the handle back stitching at the beginning and the end and stop then come in and stitch that side and that messenger strap back stitching at the beginning of the end. Go back across and add additional layers of stitching to reinforce the handles. And then if needed, you can come into these center compartments and stitch to meet right there so that if there's a little bit unstitched there, you just come in and stitch on that. So just go very slow and like I said, work in the U's first and then come back in and stitch the sides and clean up those interior compartments. This is easiest to do if you remove the machine deck. Okay, so I've made it all the way around both sides and then went back in and closed up the ends where the messenger strap is I added a third row, two more rows of stitching to each side on the messenger or shoulder strap because that's where I'll be carrying the bag the most. And then I added one more row of stitching for the handles. I totally love this design. This is gonna be so much fun to use. And I'm getting ready to load it up. When you're not using that messenger strap, you could tuck all of that inside and give this bag a little different angle. It will fit on the shoulders nice and snug. You, of course, have the freedom to make those handles longer if you like. And there was enough room, too, for me to wear this crossbody like that. So overall, it's a very spacious, seriously organized bag. And you could easily incorporate pockets into any of those interior compartments. So I hope you enjoyed the project. It was a pleasure to sew with you. I will be back soon with another inspired project. And until then, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful day, everyone.